royalty are written in the chronicles of the kings. And Joachim, his son, was reigned in his steed. Wow, you can rest right there. Bring that back out. Verse 4. And of uh, gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand. Right, what's that golden cup that Babylon got in her hand, man? Full of lies, philosophies, and doctrines, man. Right, give me that in First Ezra, chapter 4, right, in verse 18, 3 and 18. First Ezra, 3 and 18, man. That's the book that of First Ezra, she got, man. The book of First Ezra, chapter 3 and verse 18. Proverbs 23. And he said, Thus, O ye men, how exceeding strong is wine. And how strong is that wine that everybody drunk off of Babylon, man? It's strong as hell. Everybody don't know who they are. They kind of lost in their sins, right? They're getting drunk, man. They all on the left hand side, read. And cause of all men to err that drink it, read. And make up the mind of the king and of the fatherless child to be all one. And they don't know what's going on because that's like the new world order, right? The new one, man. Bring that back out, King. You got it's it. the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, and verse 29. Who have woe? Who have sorrow? Who have contentions? Who have babbling? Who have wounds without cause? Right, who have wounds without cause, man? Who have babbling? Read on. Who have redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. Them that tarry long at the wine. Them that's getting drunk, man. Excessively drunk, man. And that's talking about spiritually, man. A lot of our people damn drunk, man. Look around us, man. Don't nobody know who they are, man. They keep walking. They got pads on, right? Long weave of our oppressors here. Cleaving up to the so-called white man. Bowing down to his philosophies and doctrines. Read. They that go to seek mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine. Now what's that mixed wine, man? Trying to take a little pinch of the truth and then trying to take a damn gallon of the world, man. Trying to mix the wine together and make your own doctrine, man. Right, Well, I'm going to feel like I'm going to still be in the truth if I just love Jesus, right? But I'm going to still smoke weed, right? I'm going to still eat shrimp, crab, and lobster. I'm going to take a little of this wine, but it's a little too strong, and I'm going to put a dump a uh, damn Babylon wine in the mix of it because that fits me, man. Right? You can't do that. Right. right. When it is right, when it giveth it his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright, right. at the last, it biteth like a serpent. Right. At the last, man, that wine going to bite like a serpent. And brothers know when they drink a little too much, they're like, damn, when the hell? It kind of hit me out of nowhere. Mm. But like, I got to took another cup out of nowhere. Right? You kind of sit down for five minutes, kind of stand up, but I'm like, going to sit my ass right back down. Man. I don't know what the hell just happened. But like I took a shot or two, man. Right at the last is gonna bite you, man. Read. And stingeth like an adder. Read. Thy eye shall behold strange woman. And that eye that's beholding strange woman is Babylon the Great, man. Right. You behind all of those chief things that she has. The lights, the drones, right? Look around you, man. The chief damn movie stars, right? The athletes, the basketball players, the baseball players. You behind all of this, man. And you getting it, you starting to like it. How right? you starting to want to be in it, man? Right? You start loving the world. Read on. And thy heart shall utter perverse things. What's the perverse things that your heart going to utter, man? I'm an African-American. I'm a nigga, right? I can make it, right? This is my homeland now. I don't want to go back home, right? I don't care about that, man. I don't care who I am. Those are those things you're going to utter, read. Yeah, thou shall be as that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me. They have stricken me, read. Shall they say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? Right, you got the damn white man, all these philosophies just whooping you upside the head, and you can't even feel it because you're drunk. Right, imagine somebody whooping and going to your body, and you sitting there at the park like this, looking up at the sky. Like nothing's going on, because you don't feel it, because you numb in this thing, man. Our people so numb to Babylon the Great, they don't even understand on a deeper level, they're getting stricken and whooped to death, man. It's they right. bleed. It's, right. it's a damn trail all the way from Jerusalem, right, to Babylon the Great, and they can't even feel it, man. Right. And they don't even understand these things. Read on. I will seek it yet again. Right, and I need to seek this thing yet again. Bring that out, okay? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink. Right, man, woe to everybody in Babylon, man, that don't want to come back to the Lord. Right, to wake up early in the morning to Christianity, the ways of the world, trying to make it in this society, read. That continue until night. Man, just getting drunk. Just continue all day and all night like a damn drunkard. Just sitting there all day, mixing the wines together, right, just getting drunk, read. To wine and flame and them. And flame, read. And the hook and the bow, the tabret and pipe, 
and wine are in their feast. It's in their feast. Jump to verse 22. Huh. Verse 22. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine. Woe to them that are mighty to drink wine, man. Our people love wine on the left hand side. We got to come back to the righteous wine. Huh. We got to come back to the righteous understanding. Give me Song of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 1. Read. And men of strength and men of strength to mangle strong drink. And that's all men do all day long is they make concoctions that fit them in the Babylon the great. Read. Which justify the wicked. That do what? That justify, justify the, the wicked. wicked. That's what wine do. You get to justify the wicked when you mixing it together. Well, the white man's not too bad, right? And you gonna get put to death when the Lord come back, man. Right. Right. Like that, man. That's right. Right? That do what? That justify the wicked for right. what? For reward. For reward, man. Getting the gift. Right, you gonna be okay. I'll give you shelter. I'll give you money. I'll give you fame, Reed. And take away the righteousness of the righteous and from him. What's the righteousness? The commandments. And what does he do? He strips it from us, man. Giving us what? Drink in return. Strong drink in return. Right. Wine in return, man. Bring that out, King. Songs of Solomon 5 and 21. 5, five and 1. Of oh, 5 and 1. Slock here. I am come into my garden. Right now we need to come into the garden. Now we need to sober up with the living waters. The Lord said, I am come into my garden. Now the garden is the nation of Israel. I have came into my garden. My, talking about Yahweh Shai. My sister, my spouse. Read. I have gathered my mirth with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have eaten the sweet things of the scriptures, man. Read. I have drunk my wine. Now you need to drink the strong things of the scriptures, man. Now that you're a newborn babe, right, you got the understanding, right, you did this, you did that, you done raised up in the truth. Now you got to come and drink the strong drink, man. Now you got to get up in these prophecies, right? Get up off the strong drink of Babylon and come to the strong drink of the Lord, man. Right. You know? I have drank my wine with my milk. Eat, oh friend, drink. Yeah, drink abundantly, my oh, beloved. Now the Lord said need to come into the garden, man. We need to drink and we need to eat in this garden. We don't need to be damn unprofitable fruit in this thing, oh, right? Give me the book of Luke, chapter 3 and verse 13, man. Give me the book of Hosea, chapter 9 and verse 10. And give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 1. All right, we don't need to be unprofitable fruit in the garden of the Lord, man. We need to all lift each other up, every tree, every branch, every leaf, so that we can all grow in the Lord, man. The water from Ohio, the water the plants, we go all strong righteousness. Right. Right, bring that up, man. It's the book of Hosea, chapter 9 and verse 10. Yo. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. Now the Lord said he found us like grapes in the wilderness, man. We need to be on pleasant grapes that the Lord find, not like strange grapes in the wilderness. What does that mean? Mean a far from us, man. Not ripe fruit, man. Not chosen, right? Not good for him to eat, man. I have chosen Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first ripe and the fig tree. Right, I saw your fathers as the first ripe, meaning on fire, Judas Maccabeus, Joshua, Abraham, right? Isaac, Jacob, all our mighty forefathers, man, Daniel, right, Ezekiel, read. At her first time, but they went to the park, to the park, the ball park. There right. you go, brother. There you go, brother. Hey, brother, come in the words of the Lord, brother. Come in the words of the Lord, brother. Are you see yourself on that sign? We see yourself, brother. We're at the top. Yeah. All right. All right. So do you find that term in the Bible, African American? That's who you got to ask yourself. Yeah. Who am I, man? Who are you, brother? Yeah. If your child walks up to you, right, and says, who, who are we? Where do we come from, Dad? Tell me about my heritage. And you, there you go, brother. That's right. right. We right. just jumped on that brother just now. Like the brother said, we Israelites, man. And Lord willing, man, if we still here in 10 years, I hope that we not. He's going to be a prophet, man. Right. He's going to be mighty. Right. That's right. That's right. So the Lord That's said, right. he, the Lord kind of hopped on that brother now, and he said, we Israelites. He kind of gave away the riddle, man. Right. right. So we here to tell you we the Israelites according to the Bible. Right. We didn't pay that young man just now. Right. We didn't give him a little money and say that's like this thing inside you. Like kind of walk by and say we Israelites in the low. Right. right. Hey, man, the Lord said we Israelites, brother. Now, what does that mean that we Israelites? That means we the same people that walk with Moses across the Red Sea. Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, all our mighty forefathers. That's us in the Bible. You right. can open up the Bible. I mean, Salah. You can open up the, any page. Israelites. Israelites. All the way at the end. Israelites. All the way at the beginning. Sons of God. Chosen seed. Israelites. Time. It all goes back to Israel. One way or another, brother. You can open up this Bible no matter what chapter, what verse, 
what time of the day is going to be talking about Israel. Right. It's going to be talking about you, brother. Right. right, so we got to figure this thing out. Give me the book of Deuteronomy. Right? Yeah, hold that. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, 29 on verse 1. This is the bo book of Deuteronomy. All right, let me give you one. Let me give you one. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28, 15. Salaki, uh, 68. This is the book of Deuteronomy. One, one, uh, one mighty precept, brother. You can take it, right? You can hold it up to you. You can go home and research it, or you can fumble the ball, right? Run it to nowhere, right? Bring it up. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt now, again. Now the Lord is going to bring the chosen people of the Israelites, the Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, back into bondage again, meaning captivity. On no ship right Did you know that that's in the Bible? That we went into slavery on slave ships? Well, that's real. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. How we get here? With, with ships. ships. With what? With, with ships. ships. So, brother, we got here on slave ships, brother. That's in the Bible. Right? Thousands of years ago that was written. I'm talking about most. That was thousands of years ago. And the Lord said, look, that's going to come to pass. And did it come to pass? That's called a prophecy, brother. Right. Who did that pertain to? The children of Israel all the way to Deuteronomy, all the way to this present day, and right. forevermore. That's right. So, brother, you an Israelite according to the Bible. That's right. That's right. right. That's, that's, that is what it is, man. Lord willing, you take that, you hold it up to you. Right? No drinking excessively, no smoking, right? All them damn cigarettes and weed, right? Them damn popping endless damn women and all that lifestyle, but you got to throw that behind as a king walking this earth, right? Kings hold themselves as royalty, man. You see a king, he's not going to do certain things. He's going to walk a certain way. He's going to eat certain foods. He's going to dress a certain way. Why? Because he's a king. You're not going to confuse him with a damn homeless idiot, man. Out here that don't have no understanding. It's not coming back to the Lord. Right? You're going to say, that's a king walking this earth. Now, hey, every, everybody will move out the way if we see King David, man. Because right. we're going to know that that's royalty coming through, man. Right. I mean, literally. Right. Brothers going to be asking him questions. Hey, king David going to, you know what I'm saying? He's going to be coming through, man. He's not going to move like with his pants all down, cigarettes and black and miles in his back pocket coughing, asking you for $5, man. That's not going to happen. Right? So you an Israelite, King. All right? Come on, bring it up. This is Deuteronomy, chapter 14 and verse 2. It says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Above all nations that are upon the earth. There you have it. We above all nations, man. Give me the book of Hosea, chapter 9 and verse 11. The book of Hosea, chapter 9 and verse 11. As for Ephraim, their glory shall flee away like a bird from the birth and from the womb. Right, so the northern kingdom, man, they went the hell off, man. We need to come back and be those ripe fruits in the garden of the Lord. Give me the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 7. Give me Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 1, right? It's the book of Isaiah. You can hold that. Bring that out. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 1. Now will I say to my, be my beloved a song, my beloved touching my vineyard. My well-beloved have a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. Right, we got a very fruitful vineyard and a very fruitful hill, man. Right, look at all these Israelites that you see, man. It's a real fruitful hill. That hill is Mount Zion. Right, the nation is Israel. Right, the garden is the nation, man. And we need to be fruitful in this thing. We don't? Hold on, I got a question for you. Right, the wicked flee. It's yeah. like nothing but into. And he fixed hey, well, you and gathered it, it up. Get the words of the Lord, brothers. That's right. Right, damn bike club. <laughs> right, bring it out. And he fixed it and gathered it up. The stones thereof. Right, he fixed the nation of Israel and gathered the stones thereof. And planted it. With the choices vine. Right, the choices vine is Yahweh Shai, man. Right, let's get there in John 15 and 1. Right, then choice it with the choice vine, meaning Yahweh Shai, to grow the fruit in the nation of Israel. Right, give me that in the book of John, chapter 15 and verse it's 1. It's the book of John, chapter 15 and verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Right, I'm the true vine. I meaning can't nothing grow off of this garden with any fruit if I'm not doing it. Read on. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. Meaning the Lord getting rid of slothful men, man. Right. And now is the time to be on fire, man. If it was right. ever a time, now is the time to be on fire. Right. The Lord said he gonna pluck off these branches. You got a lot of men that kind of come around, then they kind of disappear, then they kind of come around, they kind of disappear, man. The Lord not dealing with that, man. Right. The Lord not coming to protect those type of men, man. The Lord don't give a damn about men that's wavering to and fro. 
Now on a deeper level, everybody read, right? Hold what you got, right? Right, hold what you got. Give me the book, right? Psalm chapter 34 and verse 7. Now everybody reads this, but they reading it out of context. We here to let you know that. Bring that out. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 34 and verse 7. Bring it out. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that hear him. That what? That, that fear him. him. That Salachi. fear him, man. Right? And a lot of people don't fear the Lord. Because if they did, they'll be on fire in these last days. Oh. A lot of people read that. They kind of get so, they kind of, oh, I'm not safe. The Lord is with me wherever I go. I'm good. Right? I'm going to be protected in Jacob's trouble. Right? Read that again. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. That fear him and what? And delivereth them. Oh, taste and see. Rest right there. Give me the book, right? In Daniel chapter 10 and verse 1. You got to understand this is a spiritual warfare we want in, man. Right. The Lord is only going to protect you if you're doing the work and on fire. The Lord don't give a damn whether you got fringes on. The Lord don't give a damn whether you woke up this morning and did a video. The Lord is encamping around them that really are diligent and fear him, man. The angels are round about those particular men that's on fire, man. You're not, the Lord not going to give charge over a wicked man. Over slothful man, over demonic man, over fornication man, over man that's dealing with all type of drugs, man, and demons. Read that, King. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Beth uh, Belshazzar. Belshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing, and he understood of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Three full weeks, Daniel was mourning, man. And Daniel was mourning. He was fasting for three whole weeks. Hey, brothers can't even fast for five days, man. We had our forefather, Daniel, fasting for three weeks, man. Read. I ate no pleasant bread. He didn't eat no pleasant bread. No honey on it. No unleavened. None of that. Read. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Right, he didn't eat any lamb, man. He didn't drink any wine. Read. Neither did I anoint myself at all. He didn't do none of those things. He was fasting. Now, this is a righteous man. That's why we said this is spiritual warfare that we war with, man. Right? Jump to verse 14. Verse 14. Now I am come to make thee understand. Right, now the angel was coming down to make Daniel to understand. Read on. What shall befall thy people in later days? For yet the vision is for many days. And when he has spoken such words unto me, I set my face towards the ground and became dumb. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O Lord, O my Lord, by the vision, my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord? Jump to verse 14. Verse 14. Now I am come. Salaki, verse 12. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day. Right, so the angel said, Fear not, Daniel. So on the very first day that was coming to fast, which was three whole weeks, that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard. Now, thy words were heard. Meaning, as soon as Daniel kind of humbled himself, he came before the Lord to fast for three whole weeks. The angel said, Look, man, the, the words of the Lord, he kind of hearing you, read. And I come for, uh, and I am come. For thy words. And I've come for thy words to hear you, man. Read on. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia. Not a prince of the kingdom of Persia. Give me John 16 and 11. Right? The kingdom of the Persian. That's talking about the spiritual demon Satan, man. Right? He came to withheld all the prayers of Daniel. This is a spiritual warfare. You got a righteous man fasting for three whole weeks. And you got Satan trying to block, right, every one of his prayers, man. And this is a righteous man. So Jake got to stop thinking that they safe in this thing, man. Right, got good. all their prayers is heard and in the spiritual battle. Ain't nothing going to come to pass. I'm good with the Lord. I done labored. I done made videos. I done been diligent. I treat my wife good. Hey, man, the Lord don't give a damn about that, man. You got to be spotless and blameless like the 144,000. God. Hey. Right. Well, uh, but the kingdom of Persia. Like the spiritual demon Satan. Withstood me. One in 20 days. One in 20 days. Man, in three weeks, man. Three weeks when Daniel was fasting, you got Satan blocking all of his damn prayers, man. Everything that he's doing. Then what? But, lo, Michael, 
one of the chief princes. Man, the, hey, brother, it's not over and done with, man. You got righteous angels that's going to always fight and behold you, man. They're going to stand up for you and fight in this thing, man. And that's the encampment around them that fear him. Because Daniel really feared the Lord. I mean, that's a spiritual battle. You can fast for two days. Hey, your prayer still might not get heard, man. Satan still might block it. You done fasted kind of in vain, but you did it for the Lord, man. Hey, man, it's a spiritual warfare going on. That's Every right. time you pray, it could be Satan trying to slice that out the air. That's why you pray more than one times a day. That's why you pray more than seven times a day. That's why the Lord said pray without ceasing, because it's a spiritual warfare going on, man. You can't even understand. If we can see these things, hey, man, it'll bug us the hell out. Right. How Satan trying to not knock the camera out this brother hand, and we can't see that. How the battery could go dead. Right, how it could be a tumult of damn wicked niggas come to fight us out of nowhere. And it's a spiritual warfare in the minds of these men and women out here, you know? But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the king of Persia. Meaning the Lord didn't leave Daniel alone, man. He sent Michael the archangel to stand up and fight, just like you read about in Daniel the 12th chapter. Bring that out, King. The book of First, this is the book of St. John, Second chapter 16 and, uh, and verse 11 of judgment. Because the prince of this world. Because the prince of this world. Who is the prince of this world, man? The spiritual demon Satan. The prince of this world is judged. Is what? Is, is judged. Is judged in the last days, man. We're going to bind up every wicked thing that he's trying to do. And we're going to cast it with the fire and brimstone, man. We're going to rise up like gold out of that fire and be righteous kings and judges in that day, man. We're going to come back up to our first estate as kings and princesses walking the earth. Right? Y'all can read the words of the Lord. Huh? Right? And everybody got the spirit on them, man. This proud spirit, man. Right? right? Read that again. God. St. John chapter 16 and verse 11. Hey, sisters, do y'all care about the Lord? Hey, sisters, y'all care about the Lord? I come here about the Lord. You're not about to do what? Well, you don't care about the Lord, sister. Hey, hey brothers, come here about the word. Come here about the word. All right, we got one mighty man. We got one mighty man. Okay. Hey, brother, what's your nationality? What's your race? You said you black. What about you, brother? Native American. You Native American? Uh -huh. Alright, do you find any of those terms in the Bible? No. I'm black, Native American. I'm really an Israelite. Uh -huh. Okay, why you say that? Because I lead by the words of y'all. Yahshua. Alright, well who is Yahshua? Oh. In the English term, Jesus. Right? Yahshua is damn folly, right? That's not his real name, right? There's no of these vowel variations in the Hebrew, the paleo, which is our ancient uh, tongue, right? So Yahshua, right, Yahshua, right, all of these breakdowns of these words, that's not in the paleo, which is the original, right, from the very beginning. That's not in there, right? His name is Yahweh Shah in the ancient Hebrew tongue. So, brother, you're not a black man. That's a color. That's a color, brother. Why am I not an orange man and he's not a purple man and she's not a damn yellow person? Why we are we not crayons, brother? You can't say I'm the black crayon. Somebody kind of fight you and say I'm the orange one and I'm the green one, right? That's philosophy, brother. Who told you you was black? No, you didn't, brother. I did. You was raised up from a child to believe that foolishness, man. We here to tell you the truth. So what color am I? It's not about a color, brother. You're brown skin if I were to say something, but that's not a color, brother. We're not dealing off a of color, right? Cause you have you can have an Edomite darker than you, man. So it's not about color, man. Hold on, hold on. We about to show you out the Bible. Give me Deuteronomy 29 and 1. Right, so it's not about a color thing. This. Don't you have East Indians, right, that you walk up in the damn 7-Eleven uh, and they darker than you? Are y'all the same people? I mean, not necessarily. But there you have it. He's not black. He's not black, brother. He's not black, We all from the same black. place. Bring yeah, it man. out, Ken. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. Black man. With to the children, children of Israel. Israel. So who was the Lord making a covenant with? The children of who? Yeah, Israel, right? That's yeah. what the Lord said. Yeah. Right, the children of Israel. Right, the Lord dealing with the children of Israel. Like the brother pointed out, the Israelites. Right, you have the landmass America. Right, you're American. Right, you go to China, you're Chinese. Right, we come from the land of Israel. We're Israelites. That's right. right. That's right. Now jump to verse 16. So that's the only place y'all think we come from now? Hold on, brother. We about to break it all down. But you got to listen to the matter before you ask the question. Uh, then we're going to break it I'll down. I listen to it, but I'm not really, I mean. But if we haven't even mean? finished one line of a precept, how could you interrupt? That's, you know, we got Dylan order, right? Bring it out. We just get from the top. 
It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. So we have an understanding that the Lord is talking to the children of Israel. Now we have to build up that foundation what pertains to the children of Israel. Now give me Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. So this is this covenant that we're going over, right? Bring it out, King. But it shall come to pass if thou shalt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hearken means to listen. If the Israelites don't listen unto the what? The Lord the, thy God to do what? To observe, to do all his commandments. Every last one of them. And his statutes, which I command thee this day. What's going to happen to the children of Israel? That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what's coming upon the children of Israel for them not listening to the Lord? All these what? I would, you got to listen up, brother. This is detrimental to your life. All right? All these what? All these curses. All these what? All, all these, these curses. curses. So brother, all these what? Curses. Curses. So come upon thee and overtake thee. Should I see what pertains to the children of Israel that the curses came upon them? Right? Because we could be making this up. But let's hear it off the Bible. Jump to verse 16. Verse 16. Curse shall they be in the city. So what nation of people was cursed in the cities, brother? When you go to damn Chicago, L.A., Detroit, Maryland, D.C., Florida, Mississippi, who living in the rushes of uh, damn conditions, man? Black people. Hold on, but the Lord not speaking to the black man. He's speaking to the Israelites. Yeah. Right? I hear you. I hear you. Right? So the Lord said, curse should I be in the cities. Meaning anywhere you go, if you see a damn so-called black man, he going to be cursed in it, man. Right? Yeah. He going to be getting shot at. He going to be gang banging. Yep. He going to be shooting up dope. He going to be robbing and stealing. Right? And he damn sure ain't going to have a job, man. Right? Most likely, why? Because that's a curse that happened off the Bible to the children of Israel. Right. Cursed shall thou be in a city. And cursed shall thou be in the field. Hey, brother, look at the look at the posts. Who was cursed in the fields? Getting their, their backs whooped to shreds. Bleed. Hold on. I don't know what that is. The Lord's speaking to the Israelites. You, you keep saying black like you relate. Like, that's, that's, that is what it is. I'm putting it all on black. Right? But the Lord said, look, man, it's the Israelites. Right. So, so you trying to say the so-called native Israelites too? Yeah, Of brother. this country? Every, the black people? All the twelve tribes. Every, all, all of that is Israelites. Trying to say. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are Israelites. Right. This brother will be an Israelite. You will be an Israelite. Right. All these brothers up here will be Israelites. That's right. Really, our motive here is to preach what we really are in the actual meaning of what, like, instead of black, we say Israelites. That's no, that's not the that's, that's not the point of where we out here, brother. It's way deeper than that. It's way deeper than just on knowing you. This brother knows he's an Israelite. Yeah, he kind of out of here with his shirt all open, right? No <laughs> fringes on, right? Yeah. Hey, hey. I mean, that's not the motive. If that was the motive, this brother would have made. It. Our motive is much deeper than that, man. Right. We gotta teach our people who we are. We gotta rise up out of the slums, out of the ghettos, put fringes on, put our crown back on as mighty men of the Lord and kings and priests walking the earth and do the law, statutes, and commandments that the Lord has bestowed on us so we can get the kingdom of heaven. Uh, That's good. the overall point, brother, to get the kingdom of heaven. Right. Read the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8, right? This Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8, oh. and it reads, he raiseth up the poor out of the dust. Now we the poor, and he, the Lord said he's going to raise us out of the dust, man. What does that mean? Lowest of conditions, poverty, right? The stress. He's going to raise his people out of the dust. And lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. Don't we beg, man? Don't we beg for jobs? Don't we beg for opportunities, man? Don't we the beggars of the society, man? Read. Uh, to set them among princes. To set them among princes. And brother, that's your goal to be set among mighty men. Read. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. And that's what we want, that throne of glory. By being raised up out of the dust. Now you can kind of come up out of the dust, but you still got to brush the stuff. You got to change your garment. You got to wash and make yourself clean. There's process to this thing, brother. Right? So give me Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28, right? And start at 41. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 41. Now I need you to answer very carefully, brother. Right? Three strikes and you out. Now you just say black, black. Now we're going to read this curse and you tell me who this pertains to because the Lord talking to the Israelites. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. They shall go to fun land. They, they shall, shall go, go into, into captivity. Captivity, man. Right? They shall go into captivity. Who went to captivity, brother? What you call the Israelites. What you call the Israelites? I don't call them. 
I call, I have different nationalities. I, I don't base my stuff. Hold on, but the law. Hold on, the law calls them Israelite, yeah. brother. The law said that they Israelites. Yeah, that's fine. So why do you say that's that? What you want to call them? That's because that's the not says. what I particularly believe in. You understand? Like, so I, you don't believe I'm, in the Bible? No, I just I find it interesting. You don't believe in the words of the Lord? I don't know. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight. Wow. The Bible is supposed to be the great book. It ain't about this me. is the book. Hold on, hold on. Tell me that this come to pass. And this was written thousands of years ago. Tell me. Bring this out. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now the Lord said he's going to bring you back into captivity and slavery again. How do we get to America? Well, it depends on what you believe. But I believe that most of us was already here. I believe the black people that they took was already here. And hold on, hold on, hold on. Some people. Hold on. You, you answering questions nobody asked. That's I said, the question you asked. I, I, asked, no, I asked the Pacific question, right? The Pacific question is, how did the so-called black man get to America? Now who is here? Now where my grandmother's from? Don't add and pick, brother. I believe Answer they was the already question. here. You believe that the so-called black man was actually already here? Yeah. That's what you believe? Yeah. Right, give me the book of Second Samuel, chapter 5, right? It started um, 3. Brother, you're sadly mistaken. If you think that we were over here, brother, and we didn't get right, snatched and dragged there. over here and slave ships, brother. I believe some of us were, but I don't believe all of us were. No one said that, brother. I just asked a simple question. Exactly. You can't add and simple pick. Question, you can't just, no, you're adding and picking. No, I'm no, saying, brother. The I'm Native Americans were here, brother. The Native Americans were here. The Native Americans were here. I understand hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, brother. I believe that it was Africans. Give me second address, right? Chapter 13 and verse 40. Hold on, we're going to break it down. You got to be calm, brother. Because they found tools. They found Egyptian tools in Colorado. Brother, we got you, Colorado. brother. We got well, you, brother. I'm saying, like, I believe that we was already here before I got, got you, it. brother. I got so you. They came here and they brought something. Are you saying the same thing over and over? That's listen to the words of the Lord. That's right. Hold on, brother. Bring that out. What I call? Second Samuel. Bring that out. Five and three. Look at Second Samuel, chapter 5 and verse 3. No. So all the elders. Of Israel. Of what? Of, of Israel. Israel. The elders of Israel came to the king of Hebron. So like it. Came to the king to Hebron. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. Read. And they anointed King David king over Israel. Right, this is when David became king over all of Israel. Right, read. David was 30 years old when he began to reign. And his reign, and he reigned 40 years. Read. Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years three. and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years. Now, in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and 10 years. Now, this is talking about King David. Where he reigned, where was he king, and where were we at? Jerusalem, Israel. Read. Over all Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem. They went where? Went to Jerusalem. Where our forefathers from? Went, went to, to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Went to Jerusalem, read. Unto the Jebusites. Now we went to this African nation, right? Because they kind of in our land, read. The inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither. Now he's saying they're not going to come into hither. That's what these Africans are telling King David, read on. Thinking David cannot come hit in heaven. Right, they stay they kind of thinking that we can't come into our own land, man. That's what these Africans are thinking. Read on. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. Now he took the stronghold of our land, man. He took the stronghold of Zion. He said, I don't give a damn what you're talking about, you damn African. I'm gonna take the stronghold of my my people, man. Right. My land mass. He took the stronghold of Zion. The same is the city of David. The what? The, the same city. is it's the, the city, city of David. The city of David. Because what did David do? He took the stronghold and took the land back, man. And who did that happen to? The Israelites. How did that happen to King David and our forefathers, which were mighty men of Israel? Uh, so right? part of the country. Hold on, we just read it, brother. We just read it. Israel. So that's Jerusalem. the only place where y'all think black people ever existed. Listen, or listen. Dark -skinned people. Hold on, brother. You can't ask a majority of us. questions. We, we're going to break it all down. We're going to break it all down, right? Give me the book of Galatians, right? Chapter 4. 4 and 26. Bring it up. It's the book of Galatians. Chapter 4, verse 26. So lucky. 
But Jerusalem. But what? But, but Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Same Jerusalem we read about that King David conquered and got those Africans out of our land and conquered it and named it the city of David. Just like the so-called white man puts the damn flag on everything and names it whatever he wants to do. That's what our forefathers did. And hey, we named our city, man. Well, right, they, Jerusalem. The people that they took Hold on, brother. Like we got to answer your first question, brother. Be in order, brother. Let me finish. Read on. Which is above. No, no, read it again from the top. But Jerusalem. But Jerusalem. Which is above is free. Which is the mother of us all. Which is what? Which, which is, is the, the mother, mother of, of us, us all. all. the mother of us all, brother. Meaning everything comes and is birthed out of Jerusalem. That's right. Right? Which you would call the so-called motherland, right? Not Africa. Right? Jerusalem. That's right. Right? Where our forefathers were. Where every single nationality and people came out of, man. Now, we about to let you know that we the Israelites according to the Bible. We come from Israel, brother. We don't come from America. We don't come from all of these down Philadelphia, Alabama, Detroit. All of these are places where the slave coast where we jumped out of, man, and got put in there. Right? Now, what, what I was... Give me 2nd Ezra, chapter 13 and verse 40. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13 and verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners. Out of their own land. Right, read it again for the top. This is Second Ezra, chapter 13 and verse 40. Those are the ten tribes. The ten tribes, right? The northern kingdom. Because you got northern kingdom and southern kingdom. We're part of the southern kingdom. But you got a northern kingdom, right? Like the Issachar brother right here. Right, so-called Mexican. Right? Right, you listening, brother? We're breaking it down. They are different kingdoms. You got the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Right? The ten tribes. Right, which are the northern kingdom, were what? Which were carried away prisoners. Now they were carried away prisoners. Out of their own land. Now they went out of their own land. In the time of Hosea. Of time of Hosea. Then let's get that count. Give me 2 Kings 17 and 5. It's the book of 2 Kings, chapter 17 and verse 5. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land. He came throughout all the land. We're getting the history, right? Of the so-called Native Americans, right? Amongst other tribes. And went up to Samaria. Now he went up to Samaria. And right, the capital city of Jerusalem, right in Zion, read. And besieged it three years. Right, besieged it, meaning capped around it three years. And the ninth year of Hosea. Of who? Of, of Hosea. Hosea. That same Hosea that we read about in Second Edris. The king of Assyria took Samaria. He took Samaria, right, meaning the what? The northern kingdom. Read on. And carried Israel away into Assyria. And carried them away into Assyria. Now let's pick up right off where we left off. Hosea the king. Whom uh, Shalmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. Same account we just read. And he carried them over the waters. Now he carried them over the waters, brother. You listening? Over the waters. And so they came into a, another land. Now what? Into another, another land. land. Another land. Right? So we wasn't... Hold on. Hold on. We're going to finish it off. But we wasn't always here from the beginning of the time just in Maryland. Right? It's kind of in Baltimore kicking stuff. Right? Just, just making cookouts. BET ancient world plays. Hey, this wasn't that wasn't so, brother. Right, read on. But they took the council among themselves. Now the northern kingdom they took counsel among themselves. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen. Now they say we're gonna step away from the captivity and leave the multitude of the heathen. And go forth into a further country. A further country where never mankind dwelt. And that's this land right here. That's right. Where never mankind dwelt. So that's where we got the account as going over the waters, captivity, and getting to this land that we're in right now in the Holy Bible, which is prophecy, brother. You can't shake this, deny this, or deny I mean, Hey, brother, what you going to do? These are the words of the Lord, brother. No question that you got can ever confound the servants of the Lord, man. And we're here to answer it in righteousness. We letting you know that we wasn't always in this land, man. Right. So even from, if you want to take it a further step backwards, even to the time where they were already so-called here, hey, they got transferred over the waters That's right. at a certain amount of time. This brother and his people, which is our people. Right now, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Right now, let's finish it off, brother. Because we kind of just laid the foundation of everything you just said. I hear what you're saying, bro. All right, give me Deuteronomy 28. It's called prophecy, brother. I'm, li I'm listening to you. I'm just... This is pretty one-sided. It's not like I'm asking your questions in between the questions. I get what you're saying, but I'm not literally hearing. Like, like you, I'm trying to ask, like, okay, it, like, instance, anything you said we from the southern country, right? Or the southern part, right? No, or we from the northern that. part? Never said that. That's what you said. You never said we said took that. over one of them or something like never that. Never said that. Good. I was saying, like, who did that? Like, what did they look like? The people who brought us to over here? We're going to show you, did brother. Did they start? We're going to show you, brother. Like, we here to Your show peace. you, brother. Give me yeah, the book I'm of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, right? Give me, give me uh, Genesis 25 and 25, man. 
Let's figure out what this man looks like, man. Uh, right? Let's get that account off the bike. Right? This is what it should look like. Let's figure this thing out. Bring it up. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, Give and verse 25. And the first came out red. He came out what? Came, came out, out red. red. What nation on the earth is red? King. Right? His sun dry. He came out red. You look at all of us. There you go. It just manifests. Look at this man's nose and his lips. It's red. Look at him. If I kind of went like, if I went like that a couple times, he'll, he'll get red as hell, man. Right. Kind of slap him around and jack him down. He'll turn blue and pink. Right. Now, what man did we just read about? He said the first came out red. Who's the red man walking the earth? They called him a so-called redneck, man, down south. Who? The so-called white man. The first came out red and what? First came out red all over, like in Harry Garner. And they called his name Esau. Esau, the so-called white man, the biblical nationality, the so-called white man. He came out what? Red and Harry all over. So that's the man, right, that took us. Right? And the slave trade that we're reading about in Deuteronomy 20th chapter. Now we're going to go back to it to further explain that. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and start at verse 49. Can I ask you a question real Hold quick? Hold on, after, after this. It. I just want to ask you a little question real quick. I want yeah, you to read so, verse I got you, brother. Hold up. So, they came and took us, right? How, like, when this when this particular part of the Bible came out, like, when in that, like, is it, per, is it like something that was said before and then happened or something that happened afterwards? You, you asking, did this happen? No, I'm Already saying like, did they, did they say it and then write it or did they write it and then, I would, did they write it and then it happened? Let's figure this thing out. Give me Deuteronomy 9 and 9, all right? This. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 34 and verse four. Let's figure this thing out, right? Ain't any man speak, right? Bring it out, Ken. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter nine and verse nine. When I was going up, into the mount. Now Moses, he went up into the mount, right? You know? To receive the tables of stone. To receive the commandments of the Lord. Even the tables of the covenant. Read. Which the Lord made with you. Which he made with who? Made with you. The Israelites. This is the ninth chapter. We're prophesying now in Deuteronomy the 20th chapter. So where did he get the commandments and the tables of stone to prophesy the covenant? In the ninth chapter. So this happened before, right? Read on. Then I abode in the mount 40 days. 40 days Moses was on a mountain. I'm talking about 40 days. He was fasting. Read on. And 40 nights. And 40 nights fasting. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. Now when Moses was up there writing down everything that we reading about, he was fasting. He was on a mountain. He didn't eat nothing. I'm talking about certain people would be crawled up, crying. Right? He was in the spirit. He was in the spirit, man. Right? Writing down the commandments. Right, while other people curling up, right, I, I give up, right, he was fasting in the spirit, writing down what we're reading. Read on. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone. Read. Written with the finger of God. Written with the Most High Himself. Yahweh by Yahweh Shai. And that's the ancient way of saying God and Jesus Christ. Read on. And on them was written according to all the words. Which the Lord speak with you. All the words that he's speaking with you like we just read about in the 29th chapter. Right? This is the words of the covenant that Moses commanded to speak to the children of Israel. Bring that out, Ken. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 34 and verse 4. And he hewed and he hewed two tables of stone. Right, he hewed two tables of stone, read. Like unto the first. Like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto Mount Sinai. To Mount Sinai, the same mount we just read about in the ninth chapter, the same mount that we just read about in the 29th chapter, he went out Mount Sinai. As the Lord had commanded as him. As he commanded him. And took in his head two tables of stone. Read. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there. On a chariot and broke everything down to Moses for Moses to write it down. Read on. And proclaim the name of the Lord. And proclaim Yahweh by Yahweh Shai. Bring that up. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 14 and verse 1. No. Blessed is the man that hath not slipped with his mouth. No, 2nd Ezra 14. Oh, Salakia. So, 2nd Ezra chapter 14 and verse 1. There you go, don't slip with your mouth, man. It's a dangerous slope. God, God. right? We're <laughs> on. Uh, 14 verse 1. And it came to pass upon the third day. I sat under an oak, and behold, there came a voice out of the bush. Now that voice out of the bush, right? It's talking about Yahweh Shai, what they would call Jesus Christ, out of the bush, right? Give me Exodus, the third chapter. 
3 and verse 1. Now that bush is talking about the burning bush, right? Read on. Over against me and said, Ezra, Ezra. And I said, Here I am, Lord. And I stood upon my feet. Then said he unto me, In the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses. Unto uh, so Moses. All accounts we get into Moses, right? Writing down the words of the Lord, right? And that happened what beforehand? That's the whole point of this. That happened before. So, right? This is Bible called the is prophecy. This, or just to take a bad You said what? Is the Bible this, what the word he was speaking, or just to take a bad I'm talking about everything, brother. So, right? we, Bible, hold on, hold so on. Moses wrote all of that. No, right wrote, Moses wrote the first five books. We about to explain that in this, in literally in this precept. Read on. And talked with him. Now he talked with him. When my people served in Egypt, and I sent him and led my people out of Egypt, read, and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai. Right, that same mountain we keep reading about. Where I held him by me a long season. A long season. Hold on, let me. You gotta, you gotta let the word finish, brother. I, need to hear it. I, ain't, I, ain't I read it again. Who, went, who, who they took up? Moses. The so Moses went to the Mount twice. Yeah, Moses went to the Mount a couple times, brother. Read on. Right, get that in the book of uh, Exodus, chapter twenty and verse eighteen. Huh. Right, read that. This is a uh, second Ezra 14 and 3. Well, hold what you got. Then said he unto me, In the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses, unto Moses, and talked with him when my people served in Egypt. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai, read on. where I held him by my long sea, uh, by me, a long, long season. A long season. It wasn't just one drawn out time. Right, because we just read in Exodus, the 34th chapter, the tables got broken, he had hewed them up a second pair. You know? And told him many wondrous things. Now he told him many wondrous things. Talking about the serpent in the garden. Right, he kind of broke down in the book of Numbers, the 24th chapter, that Yahweh Shai would come. Right, prophecies, right, allegories. Right, all of these things he held them by a long season to break down the word of truth. You know? And showed him the secrets. And showed him what? The secrets. And brother, this is a secret to know who you are, that we the children of Israel. God. Now he's breaking down the secrets to Moses. Right, read on. Of the times. And of the times. God. Now you just asked about the times. Now he done told Moses, he telling him the secrets of the times. That things will be prophesied and that they will happen in the latter days. That things will be prophesied that will happen three, four, five hundred years ago. That things that will be prophesied that happened when it happened right further from Moses. Read on. And the end. And commanded him, saying, These words shalt thou declare. These words shalt thou declare, right? And these shalt thou hide. And these shalt thou hide. I Meaning certain things and, and parables and mysteries don't declare them now, man. Right? Because it's not the time. Bring up the piece of Sirach 42 and 19. Bring it up. He declareth the things that are past and for to come. And revealeth the steps of hidden things. There you go, man. He revealeth all things, man. From the things that are past to the things that are for to come. And all of this is wet through the hands of the Lord, man. Right? Give me the book. Which one? I'm not calling it a lot. Yeah, you can rest right there. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. And I'm holding it. Second King, but rest right there. So you understand that, brother? All right, brother. Now, all of what we just said is called a prophecy, brother. Right? Prophecy is to foretell something that's going to come to pass. Right? Now, we just read the account of the Lord right through the hands of Moses saying that the children of Israel, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, were going what? Slavery on ships. But we didn't finish the verse. Hold what you got. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 60. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Now, these are the things that the Lord told Moses, right, in that long season to hide and some to proclaim. And now this is the days where the secrets are being manifest. Bring it up. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Back into bondage and slavery again, like at the first. With ships. How do we get to America? With, With ships. ships. There you go, brother. Where the line at? Read it again from the top. <laughs> brother kind of got and mighty And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With ships. With what? With, With ships. ships. There you go. Right, so how do we get to Egypt, brother? With what? Ships. With ships. Supposedly.